this question says the fabric structure related to weft knitting is lock knit, reverse lock knit, double tricot and one cross one rib. So in weft knitting what is the fabric uh, structure that is related to? For weft knitting it is a rib fabric, rib weave. So one cross one rib is best suit suitable for this so if we talk about something about a rib fabric so in weft knitting process when the when every wall alternates between the plane and the purl stitches on the right and the back sides so basically uh, there is there are two parts uh, first one is front part and second one is back sides so these these are alternately adjusted and uh, every wall alternates between the plane and the purl stitches on the right and the back sides this is all this is just known as one cross one rib one front one back so option d is the correct answer now looking to the next question this question says that the non woven technology which uses high pressure water jets is option a needle punching option b spun lacing option c spun bonding option d melt blowing so if you have read about what are these processes so uh, water jets are used in these water jets are used in spun lacing process option b is the right answer so what is spun lacing so basically spun lacing is a process of entangling a web of loose fibers that are loosely held on a porous belt that forms a sheet structure by subjecting the fibers to a multiple rows of high fine pressure jets of water so basically what that what actually happening in this process is ki there are uh, loose fiber webs that are uh, loosely held and when it is structured to a high pressure water jets then this uh, ek, uh, a belt sheet is formed which is known as spun lacing process so it uses water jets high pressure water jets option b is the right answer now coming to the next question in winding if the traverse speed and the package surface speed are same then the angle of wind in degree is so this is a fabric manufacturing type numerical nat question so it is also a one mark question so if you know in winding process the angle of wind that is represented by theta so tan theta is equal to vd upon vs so if vd and vs is package surface speed and traverse speed so uh, if this traverse speed and the package surface speed are same so both are same since both are same then the value comes out to be 1 so you have to find the angle of the angle of wind angle so in this case tan theta is equal to 1 theta is equal to tan 45 degree so theta becomes 45 degree and this is your answer you have to write in degrees if it is asked in radians then you have to divide by 180 then you can find the radian so it is asked in degree so the answer will be 45 i think it is clear to you now coming to the next question during air jet weft insertion if the diameter of the yarn increases by 20 percent then the percentage increase in the drag force acting on the yarn would be so it is a fabric manufacturing process so uh, during the weft uh, air jet weft insertion part so what is the drag force the drag force is the force that pulls the yarn from that acts on the yarn and it pushes forward so uh, how it is related so if you have read about the air jet weft insertion system then you must be knowing that drag force is equal to pi dl d is the diameter and l is the, l is the length so it is directly proportional to the diameter of the yarn so how how much the yarn diameter increases and in the on the equal amount the drag force will also increase 
so the drag force is directly proportional to diameter so the percentage increase in the drag force is percentage increase in drag force is and the diameter increases by 20% so the uh, so it is also increases by 20% that is uh, if you have to write 20 times x then divided by x then it comes out to be 20 so since it is directly proportional then the value would also be same percentage increase in the drag force is also 20 i think it is clear to you you just need to know what is drag force what is the formula for the drag force is pi dl and uh, now how is drag force related to the diameter of the arm so if these concepts are clear then you can answer this question now coming to the next question group 1 gives a list of loom motions and group 2 contains loom systems match the motion from group 1 with the corresponding system from group 2 group 1 says that shedding picking beat up and take up these are motions that are used in looms and group 2 are loom systems group 2 uh, the options are matched camps seven wheel rapier and jacquard so uh, i think the, this is a very straightforward question if you look uh, how shedding mechanism is working so in shedding mechanism jacquard can be used and what is the case in jacquard individual fiber in the individual fiber individual uh, one to one uh, fibers are uh, arranged in this kind of thing in case of jacquard so uh, for shedding jacquard mechanism is used and for picking what uh, can be used for picking so picking uh, we can use the rapier loom system for the picking motion and for beat up so, so beat up for beat up we can use the matched cam it is a direct question it is uh, we can use match cam and for take up roller seven wheel and five wheel motions can be used uh, since these are take up so if you read about uh, shedding picking beat up and take up motions uh, it is uh, the fabric manufacturing system um, how the fabric is manufactured then when the shed goes and when the uh, looms when the uh, warp and weft strike each other and uh, how the fabric is oriented when picking when the one pick key comes uh, when one pick comes and when it is strikes onto the loom then warp and weft are joined together and in this case the fabric is formed so this is a typical loom motion what we have just studied so this is a basic concept now looking uh, so just match the option what option can be correct option so option p4 q3 r1 and s2 so option c is the correct option i think it is clear now coming to the next question group 1 gives the list of terms of woven to the woven fabrics and group 2 contains equivalent terms related to the knitted fabrics match the term from the group 1 with the equivalent term from the group 2 so if you relate these questions these are basic uh, questions that uh, test your basic understanding of textiles in case of woven and knitted fabrics so this is a matching type of questions and you have to match the terms of the woven fabrics that with the knitted fabrics given in group 2 so in group 1 the terms that are given as cover double cloth warp and weft and in group 2 interlock veils tightness and courses so these are all in group 2 these are all knitted terms knitted fabric terms that are used in knitting and in group 1 these are all uh, woven fabric terms so if you remember in knitting a wall is a, a veil that is used is a uh, column of loops running lengthwise corresponding to the warp of a woven fabric and what is a course a course is a crosswise ro row of loops corresponding to weft so if we talk about uh, veils so veils are basically used in warp so if we warp veils so these are lengthwise 
we talk about these so these are warp and uh, these are rails that run across the lengthwise in case of woven fabric and uh, these courses runs widthwise these are courses so in knitting these warp and weft are replaced by rails and courses so i think you must have understood by now and if we talk about cover what is a cover basically cover is the tightness uh, if you have read about it d n it means the uh, uh, what is the tightness of the fabric how much the fabric occupies what is the cover of the fabric is the tightness of the fabric how much the space is occupied by the fabric what is its uh, in terms its volume uh, if we uh, you have read about the formula k is equals to dn 1 upon n1 d1 so uh, just uh, what is cover cover is just basically a tightness and what is double cloth and double cloth is nothing but just is, it is similar to the interlock fabric that is used in the knitting process so these are clear i think p3 p3 q1 r2 and s4 so option b is the correct option i think it is clear to you so option b is the correct option now coming to the next question determine the correctness or otherwise the following assertion and reason the assertion that is given as in shuttle loom late shedding is preferred for filament weaving and the reason for this is in late shedding shedding the timing of the shed dwells matches with the timing of the shuttle travels through the shed and therefore it minimizes the rubbing of the warp yarns so um, before this let's talk about what is late shedding so in case of late shedding all the heel shafts come equal to equal level when the crank comes to 5 degree after the top center so this is a basic concept of the uh, late shedding and what are its advantages and the late shedding is basically used for weak warp yarns it allows greater time for the shuttle passage so it is very suitable for synthetic yarns or the weak filament yarns and uh, it is very useful if the pick of low strength is used but there are some disadvantages of late shedding also as the warp yarns are not distributed evenly during the beat up motion so fabric cover is low in case of uh, late shedding so or, or, and also it causes the less distribution of the yarns so it is not suitable for very fi fibrous warp yarns and it causes a weak fell of the cloth because uh, the weft me roll back so it is useful for uh, filament weaving but it is not useful for other type of uh, weaving because the reason that is shed in said in this case that the timing of the shed it dwells matches with the timing of the shuttle travels through the shed so it minimizes the rubbing of the warp yarns and uh, the and so that can be used for filament weaving uh, and the fabric may not be break so this is the correct reason for this and uh, so if you talk about what is the um, option correct option so the correct option is option number a both assertion and reason are true and r is the correct reason for a so this option a is the correct answer now coming to the next question for a given woven fabric the fractional cover is 0.5 for both warp and weft the fractional cover of the fabric is rounded off to two decimal places is so in this case what is given is c1 is warp cover is said to be 0.5 and weft cover c2 is 0.5 it is given so what is the formula for the fractional cover of the entire fabric including both warp and weft so fractional cover is equal to if you know the formula fractional cover c is equal to c1 plus c2 minus c1 c2 c1 is 0.5 plus 0.5 minus 0.5 into 0.5 one minus 0.25 it will come out to be 0.75 so the correct answer is 0.75 
and you have to write in two decimal places so the correct option is 0.75 only so it is the answer i think it is a simple question and it was also a two mark question direct straight forward question in this question uh, sometimes they ask for cover factor so cover factor is nothing but a 28 times c so k it uh, k is represented by cover factor so you can calculate the cover factor as well Uh, if uh, you have calculated the fractional cover of the entire fabric so it is not a tough question you need to be clear with the fundamentals question fundamentals of the uh, basic uh, of what type of questions are asked in this gate examination i think it is very much clear to you you must have understood by now the pattern of the gate examination in the latest years that is 2021 22 so how these they ask they do not ask very tough questions some questions are no doubt very tough but majority of the questions are doable and you have to focus on the doable questions only you do not need to solve 100% of the questions you need to you have to solve just 80 to 90% of the questions but the major thing in the gate examination is your accuracy whatever you solve just have your accuracy to about 90% and you will ace the examination i think it is very much clear to you now coming to the next question for a shuttle loom producing plain woven fabric if each of the dwell periods of the shedding cam corresponding to 1/3 of the crankshaft rotation the sum of the two dwell periods of the cam in degree is you have to uh, find the sum of the two dwell periods at uh, the corresponding uh, things so uh, if you know sum of the two dwell periods so the if the, the total dwell is about 360 0 and then it comes out to be 360 so if each dwell of the shedding cams uh, correspond to 1/3 of the crankshaft rotation 1/3 means 1 upon 3 and sum of the uh, two dwell periods so two dwell periods are 0 degree and 360 degree means 2 pi respectively so 1 upon 3 0 plus 360 degree so 360 degree upon 3 it will come out to be 120 degree so sum of sum so sum of two dwell periods of the cam sum of two dwell period of cam is come out to be 120 degree i think it is clear to you ki how it is calculated 120 degree because uh, uh, the two the two dwell periods of the cam are first one is at 0 degree and when the cam is rotated fully then it covers uh, 360 degree means full rotation covers 360 degree 2 pi and it half one is 180 degree so 2 pi rotation and it is said to be 1/3 as it is given in crankshaft rotation 1/3 the crankshaft shaft rotation so we have divided by this and we have found the answer very easily i think it is clear to you now coming to the next question which says that 